want to re remind the commissioners, please, to make sure your mics are on at this time. And we are going to do the roll call. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you take care of that for us, please? Jeff Aker. Here. Here. Randy Here. 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 Bobby Hunt. Here. Tim Horner. Here. Joe Huntsman. Here. Eileen Norwine. Here. Mike Reed. Here. Wayne Lee Smith. Here. Howard Shipley. Here. Jim Stepp. Here. Taylor Ward. Here. We do have a quorum present, so we are prepared to <coughs> uh, transact business. And at this time, we would entertain public comments from uh, the citizens of the community. You'll have three minutes if you would please come to the podium state your name uh, at this time and your address can you hear me yes my name's Edna Green I live at 4981 Cameron Road <clears throat> for what you're getting ready to vote on tonight I hope you have given it some seriously thought that you're the last time and I listened to Thomas Stody bring to your attention that we had a need for a basic jail. That is where the need is at tonight. It is not for a justice center. It is not for new offices for Teresa West. And it certainly isn't for additional offices for the judges. The burden that you are getting ready to place on the taxpayers of Hamlin County, their children, their grandchildren, and possibly another generation is uncalled for, unnecessary, and unconscionable for you folks to do tonight. Some of you are businessmen that I thought were fairly smart gentlemen. I am beginning to wonder. Some of you have dealt in finance. I am beginning to wonder how you've done your business, if you were honest or if you were otherwise. And that's just my preference tonight. But I don't understand how, in the name of God, that you can do this tonight. I don't understand what makes you want to push forward for something that you know is going to put us in debt to 34. The schools will come back for more money. There are a great many of you tonight that came from the school systems. And you know who you are, so I'll be polite and not call you by name. But how, with a clear conscience, can you do this? Schools are just like homes. They have needs to be maintained, whether it's air conditioning, whether it's buildings, whatever the need is. And you just know they're coming back. So how can you sit there and put an additional burden on the taxpayers when you know you're going to have to raise property taxes to do this? And it's not going to be a hamburger, folks. Hamburger might be 12 bucks maximum. Our tax bills will be a whole lot more than that. For the businesses that pay a higher level of commercial taxes, it's going to be even worse. I just don't understand how you can pray to God and then make a mockery of him sitting here tonight. I don't understand how you can do this with a clear conscience. You know, my pastor preached Sunday night, if God was for you, who could be against you? And I'm telling you right now, God is on our side on this for doing the right thing. That's all it boils down to, is the right thing. And I just don't understand how you can be men and a woman and do this. Do you really think your neighbors are going to thank you? I can tell you point blank it for, for the district that I live in, no. No. For the district in the 12th district, no. I talked to one of them today. They asked for your phone number, sir, and I give it to them. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate Thank it Thank you very for much. the privilege. I hope you folks think twice before you vote tonight. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Hold on just a Road, Marshtown. Hold on a minute. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, when this jail was discussed at the last commission meeting, a commissioner sat up here and talked about how that the plans for this jail Look just like the jail built in Sullivan County proceeded to go on about it and then made the remark how Sullivan County is the most successful county in East Tennessee. Eastman Kodak, all the big 
facilities they have up there. Well, they, we're not Sullivan County, Morristown, Hamlin County. is the poorest county in the state of Tennessee with a population <clears throat> more than 25,000. That you want to put us in debt for something equal to the most successful county in the, uh, East Tennessee? There's no logic in doing that. It makes no sense to what you're doing here. You're getting ready to bankrupt us, and we're going to end up putting the bill, and we're going to be the one losing while y'all go home loading your back pockets. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you have to come to the podium. State your name and your address, please. <coughs> Melanie Jabert. Melanie Jabert. I'm 8174 East Andrew Johnson Highway. I recently moved to Tennessee last year. I'm new to the county. I come from Virginia. What you all are about to build does not make any sense. That sounds like a courthouse in Fairfax County, Virginia. When I looked up the crime right here, <clears throat> it doesn't compare to why you would need a jail of this size for this county. And I agree with them. You're about to bankrupt us for what? The crime rate does not say that you need a jail of this size in this county. So the question is, what is this really about? We carry so much on our back. And the worst part today, probably say, what does it have to do with you? I got a letter from the job that I work with, I'm on disability, 100% disabled. And I got a letter today to tell me that my pension is now canceled, December 31st, 2021. And you want to put this on my back too? Please, don't do this to us. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hello, my name's Lisa Espinosa and I live at 2645 Mountain View Drive. People now are trying to figure out how the, our economy is going, you know, everything's going up prices. And I wonder, you know, let me get the right thing. Hey, do you really think we need a new jail? The only people I see that really want this jail is everybody over here. I don't see people behind me screaming jail. Okay, who's going to pay for this jail? We the people, that's me and these people. Our property tax will go up again like it did this year. And the property tax will go up on our house and home insurance too. I don't know about everyone else, but I'm on a fixed income. That means my income is fixed Well, I am broke all the time. This is, wrong. this is the wrong time for a big ticket item like a new jail. Gas prices are up, food, paper product, utility, and even our property taxes went up this year. I myself have been shopping at the dollar store and went from quilted northern toilet paper to the cheap off brand just to cut corners. People are just trying to figure out how to get by with the new economy and everything going up. And I wonder, why do good hard working people that follow the law have to pay for those that are breaking the law, criminal? And more likely, when they get out of jail, it won't be long till they're back again. I would love it if each inmate would pay for this jail, adding extra money for their fines and probation, because it's them that stays there, not me. It would be nice to see the inmates working on this jail, to build this jail, since it's them that's going to be using it. And it would be really nice if everybody on the board member and that voted for the jail would pay three times more on their property tax for this. Maybe y'all can afford it but I don't have the money to spend on it. I don't believe we need a new jail at this time. I think we can wait on this product until, project until our economy is better. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Tony, there's a gentleman back here stood up. Go ahead. Carl Murphy, I live in Morristown, 1101 West Rose. 
Mr. Chairman, what I'm going to talk about here is the uh, high-priced something that's going in here, where we're going to put our people in. Um, it's, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to start with me, okay? I was raised as a poor boy. First home cost was four or four hundred dollars. Four hundred and fifty dollars. Besides, the, right beside the, the uh, fattest store in Goose Holler. If anybody knows about Goose Holler. Uh, no inside water, no electricity. It was rough for Mom and me during World War II. Dad was discharged December the 14th, 1945. I pulled four years active and four years on standby reserve, USAF. Both were willing to give our lives for our home and country. Now I'm asking all 14 commissioners to do what's right for our country and theirs. This 100 million plus jail that some want to spend and leave it all to county folk to pay the bill. Jobs here are for all elected to do what's best for the county, not themselves, and you know that. This 100 million plus is a cost that never should got this far, much less a vote. Do what's right. When it comes up, vote no. For God's sakes, vote no. Don't make this look like Washington. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service and thank you for your comments. Anyone else? It's Tony. My name is Tony Stralzulo. So, the Justice Center. Last meeting, I had spoke that we need to let the choice be made by the citizens in a vote. I have since then been addressed by many people saying that that is a great idea. And that is what we need to do. And this was brought up before and it was looked past. For you all to make that decision we know that we need a new jail. We all know that. But we do not need to strap ourselves that much. We know that the school board, it's fact, the school board's coming back for money. So don't sit up here and say, no, we're not raising taxes to build the jail. You are raising taxes to build the jail. You're just not doing it before you build the jail. You're going to wait for something else to come back. The Hale House project, it's going out for a bid. It needs funding. There's other projects that are going to come along. You saw it just cost you all another $60,000 for two new garbage trucks. This isn't going to change. Bill Britton stood up here like a salesman last meeting, stating that all the graphs, there's no increase in, in what the economy is going to bring up from new homes and developments, and that we're not taking that in consideration. You know what we're not taking in consideration? The speed of inflation versus the little difference in growth. That's what we are missing. So to say that everything is going to be smooth is false. You're looking at a, a, a facade instead of looking at the real deal. We can't afford this jail. We need this jail, but we can't afford it. Nor can the people that are in, currently incarcerated and that will be incarcerated in the next three years wait three years to get into a new facility. We need something that we can do a single pod, move over the first 200 people, and keep building. That way we can get the amount of inmates down that are there now. With less inmates, it can run a little bit more efficiently. 
Yes, will it not be cost effective really at the beginning because you're splitting them up? No, but we're gonna need those employees eventually anyways. So we might as well get them on board, give them a little training before we throw anybody into a, just a new facility. They need to understand what it is like to work with these inmates so that they can better another thank new you. facility. Tony, thank you for your comments. We appreciate it. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Yes, sir. My name is Christopher Collins. I live at 2792 Helton Gaby Road here in Morristown, Tennessee. I have not been able to make a lot of these meetings due to working second shift, and that's when you guys normally schedule them. However, I am here today, and I have one big question. One plus one equals 92 million. One we need in new jail. The other one you guys have presented to them and nobody likes. As it's been said before, it's gonna put this county in debt. Debt that my children will have to deal with, that my grandchildren will possibly have to deal with. Last I checked, every man and lady that is sitting in here before me now is an elected official. You campaigned to be the voice of the people in your district. Am I correct? Voting yes tonight will not only cause you guys to lose the respect of your people in your district, but will also potentially cause you to lose your next election. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Rob Burke, 720 White Oak Circle. So I stand with everybody here that has said so far that they oppose this. For multiple reasons, you have seen multiple people from multiple walks of life come up here and tell you why this is not a good fit for them, for their families, for their children, their grandchildren, etc. We have people that live on fixed incomes that you're well aware of that we've heard tonight. We have people that have recently just moved into the community. I dare say if she knew that this was coming down on, on her, the potential, she would have looked another way and chose not to live in Hamblin County. There are many options for people to live anywhere they like. And she chose at that point, probably wisely, because Hamlin County's got a lot of great things going for them, for us. However, if we continue to put ourselves in debt, as other people have said, put this burden on our backs, not your backs, because yes, you gotta eat a piece of it, but you're not on a fixed income, income like many of these people are. So if we have to put this on our backs, what is that gonna look like? What is that looking like for our family, our children, the next generation? And I'm just concerned, just the same as that, that woman that might, have not, might not have lived in Hamlin County if she knew these taxes were coming, that these increases were coming, she would have looked elsewhere. I'm concerned that my children will look elsewhere when it's time to buy. I'm concerned that your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren will look for somewhere else to buy as well because it is no longer According to what this commission is trying to do, it is no longer economically efficient for a lot of people to live here. And you're pushing those people out. And then where's your tax revenue? And it's been said before, Commissioner Hahn, I believe by you, I believe, if I recall by the last meeting, that we are very divided, not just in this room, in this council, in this commission, and, and in the community, country as a whole. And I agree with you, we are very divided. But I see behind me a lot of people that are standing fast on their hard beliefs of what is best for their community. I see a lot of people that are coming to their commissioners asking for you to hear their voice. That you were put in this position, as I said, elected for their voice and they're coming to you hearing their voice. I'm not seeing that many of you listen to that voice. So yes, we are divided. But in many ways, it's because you're not listening to the people that put you in that seat that you're sitting in tonight. And I'm a little disappointed in that. But one thing that we're not divided back here is that we, you said before, before that there's a certain group of the room. You're even sitting on opposite sides of the room. But I chose on purpose to sit on this side to say, listen, I am not with these people specifically. Yes, these are from what I could tell, good people. What I am for Thank you is for this community, comments. I am for my family, and I am for the people that want to do what's best for this community. Where do your intentions <coughs> lie? Thank you. 
Thank you for your comment. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Karen Arwood, 1501 Eller Road. I just want to reiterate, at the last meeting, of course, you had uh, Mayor Bill Britton stand up here with his charts and everything and saying, oh, we c we're going to be able to do this without any increase on taxes, et cetera. Yes, that may be, may be true on the bonds and everything to build it. But what is not being in, taken into consideration on beyond the fact that you will max out the debt on this county. So therefore, if anything comes up, anything happens, as you always, you always see, you've always got different offices, sections asking, we need this, we need that. But not only for this jail to house that many people, your medical costs are going to increase for all the the increase. You increase the number of people, then this is going to increase everything I list. Your medical costs, food costs, salaries for additional employees to man the jail. Not think about this big of a building, a hundred million dollar building. Do you not think that your liability and or building insurance is going to go up tremendously? Think about it. Uniforms, training, clothing just for the inmates. Think of every day-to-day -day operation of everything that goes into operating a jail on a daily basis or even on a monthly some months based on the medical costs, not only for having the 53,000 53, plus per month that's tied in and spoken for, for the health group that actually is responsible for having people in the jail now to take care of all the inmates, but the outside expenses of specialty going to the hospital, dentistry, you name it, all the expenses that each and every one of us would incur in life in general. The Hamlin people of Hamlin County are responsible for every single solitary day-to-day -day life expense for everybody in jail. <clears throat> Southeastern Health Partners is over $53,000 a month right now. I don't know a new contract for that many, that many more incarcerated people, plus all the going to hospital, et cetera. Think about day-to-day -day expenses for that many more people. That's where our taxes are going to get increased. Thank you Thank for you. your comments. We appreciate it. Anyone else? Ms. Matt. and I live at 8174 East AJ. I just recently moved here as well and I'm from Northern Virginia. Kind of a big mixing pot of people and the thing I love the most about when I moved here is that it was such a warm, safe community, lots of love. I didn't have to look over my back to see who was behind me, if somebody was going to try to shove me in a car. And I can't imagine what would happen if you built a jail so big in this county and filled it up with so many criminals, what that would do to the feeling of safety and community in this neighborhood, because you're not gonna build a jail that big and not fill it up. So it just makes me wonder, the next time I go out by myself at night, how safe am I gonna feel? How is that gonna affect the edginess of other people in the community? It's just something to think about. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Seals, Old Kentucky Road. What you all have failed to realize is us as citizens voted you here to be our voice. If you vote yes, it's disgusting display that you do not listen and fill your own agenda. None of us taxpayers want to burden this cost. You need to listen to us. That's your job. That's what you voted in for. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Uh, go ahead.
Holden, 8150 West Point Drive. I've been coming here for eight years. I see the same old thing all the time. Nothing never changes. And Mr. Horner, you ain't in my corner. Not if you vote for that jail. I'm sorry. I have nothing against you. Keep your, keep your comments directed to the chair, please. Well, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Horner's not in my corner. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I have nothing against Mr. Horner. I just don't think you should vote for a $100 million jail. Okay. Any of you. And if you want to make money in the jail, put the jail people to work. Make them clean up the niceness that's in the jail. Uh-huh. Give them a job. Pay them a, a minimum wage salary. Let them provide for themselves. We don't need a new jail, not a four-story jail. We need a new jail. But now, who's going to say and who's going to check it out to make sure it's clean and respectable and it's kept up? You didn't do it the last time. What makes you think? What makes you think I believe you'll do it this time? I mean, come on. You can, that jail is filthy. And, you know, it has to be cleaned. It don't clean itself. My house don't clean itself. I have to clean it. And, you know, give the, give the people that break the law some responsibility. And don't tell them they have to sign off on everything they do. And you talk about mold and mildew. There's mold and mildew in people's houses where they live. What about them? And they get up every day and go to work. And they don't ask you for nothing. They pay their taxes and live in mold and mildew houses. But the people that break laws, they can't live in mold and mildew. They might sue you. <clears throat> well, you've had plenty of that. You know, I don't understand the law. I don't believe it's for the just. I believe it's for the unjust. Because <laughs> I've seen too much of it. If you vote for this jail, I feel sorry for all of you. Because what goes around comes around. And people are getting sick of paying all the time for people that don't want to do the right thing. And you're supposed to be truthful and honest, especially if you're going to church. Because, see... It don't make no difference whether I see if you're truthful or honest or not. God knows you are. He sees everything. So you better be careful what you do because you have to answer for it. Thank you, Quinn. Ms. Noe. Divided where you just take well, you one of them not pass down and take one one as it's divided up. That's fine, we'll get them. I had them split. September 24th, 2020, with attachments. Which is a resolution you passed out of committee in November of 2019. <coughs> right, you have before you a special, a special call meeting 
Thank you. Two items on the agenda. Your $92 million jail and a bond resolution for $10 million. You could solve your jail problem for $60 million if you wanted to. And that's what the people want. It's not that we say we don't need a jail. We need an affordable jail, a simple jail, a safe jail, and one that we could actually staff. And that's a one level jail like, like Coffee County. I'm not saying you have to do exactly what they do, but like Coffee County. But let me get to what the problem we have today. And Mr. Cutshaw, you've been taking notes. Take notes right now. There is a motion to approve that contract. You better raise a point of order because this does not comply with the 10-day rule. The 10-day rule is attached to your regular calendar, the item that I gave you with the attachments. And this is what the 10-day rule is. It's not that the commissioners get something. 10-day rule, this was the clarification. Contracts will be put in the regular committee packets to be discussed at the committee meeting, but no action will be taken until the subsequent county commission meeting. So you have not complied with the 10-day rule just because Mr. Britton came out here and said, oh, you approved a you approved the bid and that's the other problem mr horner your bid your motion was to approve the low bid of blaine construction and alternates one through three for ninety two million two hundred eight thousand and move forward with contract negotiations that's what you all passed not to approve entering into a contract that's where Mr. Britton stepped in and threw stuff out at you. So keep in mind, you've been really big and tight on these rules. You cannot vote on this contract because it hasn't gone through the 10-day rule, the true 10-day rule. And another thing you had was that, that one-page sheet the resolution that you have, the 10 million resolution, it's a contract. It has to go through committee for the 10 day rule. Give the people a break, postpone this, table it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. That's a good question, Mr. Ward. You want to know where the county attorney is? Anybody else who wishes to address the commission? Hi, my name is Teresa Archer. I live at 1502 Allen Road. The only thing I gotta say, guys, is you best not do it because, and I know you go to the grocery store because I've seen you there. <laughs> Things are gonna get worse. Things are gonna go higher. People don't want to work now. I retired in April. I have a friend who owns a restaurant in Sevierville that cannot staff it at $15 an hour. I'm going over there four days a week and working for him so he can staff his restaurant to make a living. That's just not going on over there. That's going on here. People are not going to work in the younger generation because the feds are handing out money. That money's not free. We see that at the gas pump. And another thing, the majority of you all were elected to be good stewards of our money, and the most of you ran on a Republican ticket. Republicans are conservative. So if you seek re-election and you vote for this, switch to your other party, because evidently 
You're a Democrat under the sheets. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? Hearing no other comments then? Yes, sir. I don't know much about what y'all doing, because to be honest with you, I don't pay a whole lot of attention unless something like this comes up. But my name's Steve Conway. What's I live address, up on Mr. Bell Conway? Road, which is up okay. behind the BFW. And once the mailbox day pulled yesterday and got my homeowner's insurance bill, last week Mr. Long sent me my county tax bill, and I'm a son of a gun. A couple of days ago, I didn't get my city tax bill. And one of the things that I really object to is the design of the building. I don't think it ought to be a three-story building or whatever because that's got to take more people to cover three stories than it does one because in a horseshoe shape, you can have your control center in the middle of it, and you see the whole jail. So I, I don't see any reason for having to hire all these people and all that stuff. And as far as needing a jail, I don't know. I guess we do need a jail, but now if them prisoners up there are griping about it, being crowded and stuff, put them on a troop ship. They'll see what crowd it is on a troop ship. That's not a hotel. That's a jail. You know, I don't have any sympathy for them. Because <laughs> if I break a law, I expect to be up there. And I think anybody that does that ought to be up there. But uh, as far as that's a lot of money, we just, uh, I don't know, some of these folks probably live in the city, and we just got through building a big Taj Mahal, or we're in the process of building it for Jefferson County down here now. Plus, we built a big garage down there that would suit New York City, I guess. It's a magnificent jail. I mean, it's really a pretty place. <coughs> And I'm sure this jail will be a pretty place. But we don't need nothing in Jefferson City. We don't need no community center. We don't need no big, fancy, three-story jail, boys. That's all there is to it. And $100 million is a lot of money. That's where it is. Joe Biden will probably send it down here, but you can't ever tell. You know, Joe. <laughs> Anyone else who wishes to address the commission? <laughs> Hearing nobody else will proceed. Uh, with the uh, agenda, item number A. Uh, Mayor Britt. Before I get to the contract, um, I want to uh, bring, bring to your attention, if you would look at the budget, uh, the Justice Center budget that's in front of you. I want to uh, bring to your attention a, an error I made in, uh, in calculating the budget that uh, was presented on the 21st. Um, in the uh, design fee for, for Mosley, the contract with Mosley is, uh, says that the fee will be based on the construction amount um, that is signed with the construction company. And in the budget that I had uh, before you on the 21st, it didn't have the, the 92 million number. Uh, it was calculated on, on a lower number that, that we had had uh, used previously. Uh, that was just an oversight on my part. So after I recognized that, I contacted uh, Dan Mace with Mosley. Uh, we negotiated um, what to base the, the fee on and agreed that um, uh, to base it on the low bid from April, not the 92 million, but the 88 million from April. So the, the design fee uh, that uh, we'll pay Mosley is based on the $88 million uh, low bid from April. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. What is that amount? It's in the budget. The total for the whole, the, the fee calculation is based on two things. When it's based on the first 25 million, um, it's 6% of the first 25 million, and then 5.5% from there to the construction amount, which is 88 million. So the total is 5,374,810. No 
no comments from the audience at this time, please. In also um, in your packet is the, the contract, the standard AI uh, contract with uh, Land Construction Company. It was reviewed, it was prepared by, by Mosley Architects uh, and reviewed by your project manager uh, from Burwell and your county attorney. And um, everything's in order and uh, we recommend it. Where do we stand as far as this 10-day rule and the uh, comments that have been made by Ms. Noy? It's this contract, it's been before you for 10 days. Don't you dare. It's been before you for 10 days. That's, that's the well, correct a number. Rule. Okay, any other, any other questions from the mayor? Howard, we need to look at this 10-day thing. We need to see if we're right on it or wrong on it. Uh, I don't have a copy of any of this information. It might pass me, but uh, the uh, county attorney could respond to that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Attorney, there's a, a question on the 10-day rule yes. that uh, it deals with uh, the question has to do with it going through committee, 10 days to, for, the, for the committee to discuss. And I we, don't know that the 10-day rule applies to committee because it's not a final action and we're not taking action on a, on a contract. That would be my we're taking action on the contract tonight and also on a resolution to borrow ten, an additional $10 million. I understand that. Step up to the podium. Please. Right. Audience. I, I'm very audible, audience. thank you. Uh, you're talking about for committee or for the commission? Well, we're in a commission meeting now. Yes. And... Uh, it's been pointed. Ms. Noy, go ahead and share your concern again. I don't have that right in front of me now. All right, thank you. It's the one that has three sheets, and this is when you voted in September of 20, 24th, 2020. Twelve of you. <coughs> Well, we 14 voted to keep the 10-day rule. The only ones that voted to get rid of the 10-day rule were Howard Shipley and Jim Stepp. Right behind that, in the same minutes, September 24, 2020, there is the 10-day rule. It was clarified in 2015, and it is still in effect and that 10-day rule says contracts will be put in the regular committee packets to be discussed at the committee meeting, but no action will be taken until the subsequent county commission meeting, normally 10 days after the monthly committee meeting. You're welcome to have a copy. I think you need it. That's fine. I'm okay, so basically... Sure. We've not gone through a com the committee. And that's what the 10 day rule says. Without, without the ability to look into that further, I mean, if that's what the 10 day rule says and we're trying to comply with it, then that's what the 10 day rule says. Okay. You need to just table this. First Chairman, day. is there a motion to suspend the 10-day uh, rule? No comments, please, from the audience. We gave you an opportunity to speak. You spoke. It's time now for the commissioners to discuss among themselves. We were trying to seek a legal opinion. Uh, sir? Is there a, can we do a motion to suspend the 10-day rule? You could. It takes two-thirds a majority vote to suspend the 10-day rule. I'll make that motion. All right, we have a motion.
to suspend the 10-day rule. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Uh, I'll second for discussion. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, there is. On suspending the 10-day rule. Uh, my, my discussion, I'd like to hear others' thoughts. We, we discussed this. I, I mean, in our previous meeting, it did not go through, uh, I guess you'd say actual committee, but the whole thing was discussed as far as where we were headed what our idea was it wasn't new we were taken at that point we all knew what was going on i've had the contract in hand and if we need to sit back and do the committee i i'll, I'll do that but it I, I don't see that it changes anything it doesn't and you know what what's, what it is we have postponed, 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 and that's why we're in the position we're in now because we postponed, postponed, postponed. I, 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 you know, for 12 years we have postponed this thing, and we need to make we need to move on this thing before it gets any more expensive. I, I feel like we we did in the in the idea of it. We did what's being asked. Anyone else, which Mr. Neesmith? Mr. Shipley. Uh, 10-day rule says it's got to go back through committee. This contract has not gone back through committee. Well, we understand that, way. Okay, well, my, my thing is, you know, why you got a rule and then somebody wants to suspend it? It says it's got to go, the contract has got to go back through committee, but then we voted on that commission. We suspended. We, we need to get this thing right. You don't need to be playing around with it. Okay. Everett. of the 10-day rule is is being followed and that is that you present it to the committee okay that's what the the verbiage says which is in in the justice center project committee it's a full commission it was presented to the full commission on the 21st day of uh, October and now before the full commission there could, there could be a vote. So it went before the commission, which is larger than the committee, or actually makes up the committee, and now before the commission. This is, fo this is following the spirit of the 10-day rule. It's just a matter of semantics. Then we don't even need a motion in a second, but we've got one on the board if we want to do it. All right, let's go back to the... Uh, the motion to to suspend the 10-day the rule. Is there any more discussion on the motion to suspend the 10-day rule? Let's call the roll. Uh, the, if you vote yes, you're voting in favor of suspending the rule. If you vote no, you don't want to suspend the rule. Call the roll, please. Jeff Aper. No. Please Aye. No. Thomas Dunley? Aye. Tim Aye. Bobby Holmes? No. Tim Horner? No. Joe Huntsman? No. Eileen Arnwine? No. Mike Reed? No. Wayne Nee Smith? No. Howard Shipley? Yes. Jim Stett? Yes. Taylor Ward? No. The motion fails. Okay, we're back to the where we were with the contract. You, what's the will of the body? Well, just like the mayor just said a minute ago, uh, he, he uh, on the twenty-first. Was that what? Was that correct? Twenty-first, yes. mayor of October. It was presented to us. It's more than ten days. So, I, like I said a minute ago, I don't think, think we need, uh, it didn't even need a vote, but we did. Uh, you have a rule. You didn't suspend it. 
Mr. Shipley, the com this says it goes through committee. It doesn't go say about us getting together and discussing it. So, better look at the wording on it. I'm asking, I'm asking for a motion. Well, I can say this. We, uh, was it April, March or April, we were all set to go and we didn't like the bids. They were too high. So we come back and we made a few cuts. And uh, that's enough. Okay. In six months or whatever, it went up, what, almost 5%. So every day we let this thing go on, it's getting costlier and costlier. Uh, we, we can't keep putting this off. And I said at the last meeting, it's time to move on it. I haven't changed. I think we need to move it. We talk about inflation. This thing's going to cost us a whole lot more money. It's already gone up over, over five. Oh, comments, please, no comments from the audience. Over five percent, like I say, since March or April, whenever it was. That's a lot of money, and it's continuing to grind away as we put this off and we put it off. That's what we need. We need That's jail. enough. All right. Anything? Uh, we still don't have a motion. <coughs> I make a motion. We continue. Continue with what? C continue on with, with the uh, presentation in the jail. Passing the... You move uh, that we approve the contract. Correct. Is there a second to that motion? I will second that motion. There's a motion and there's a second that we approve the contract. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing no discussion. Hold, hold on. All the roll, a yes vote is that you approve the contract. A no vote, you do not approve the contract. No. Aye. No. Tim Cohen. Aye. Bobby Hong. No. Tim Horner. No. Joe Huntsman. No. Eileen Arnwine. Yes. Mike Reed. No. Wayne Neesmith. No. Howard Shipley. Uh, yes. Jim Stepp? Yes. Taylor Ward? No. Eight. Eight, no. Okay. Uh, the uh, motion fails. Contract is not approved. Uh, so I guess there's no need to go on to the next item, is there, Chris? <laughs> Mr. No contract. Mr. Chairman, can we proceed on with the hearing? What we have here is a procedural problem. Can we go ahead and hear what he has to say so that we can at least be giving more thought to digest? Um, He's going to be speaking on the bond issue. Vote on it later. Okay. No, it, it would come back if it doesn't happen now. We'll still have to do it at some point. This is not going to go down. And so... Well, you're... You're in a dilemma right now because you didn't approve a contract. So you're going to, I guess, take it through the committee and then approve the contract? Okay. All right. Chris, they want to hear you now. Not to prove it, just hear what you got to say. And do you still have time next to, to get to oh. your next meeting? Okay. okay. Chris Bessler, Common Securities out of uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, before you've got a bond resolution as you guys uh, all know and you all know that uh, we've been up here before you a couple of times we've approved both an 85 million dollar initial resolution and a 42 million uh, 400 thousand dollar resolution previously both of those were uh, procedural as we went through before so to make sure we were abiding by the sunshine laws of the state and giving citizens an opportunity to uh, protest the planned issuance of debt 
to be able to move forward on an actual bond issue, the county has to adopt a bond resolution. So you've already done one uh, previously that did some schools and, and um, some of the preliminary uh, costs, soft costs for the Justice Center. Uh, and those bonds were issued in 2020. Uh, before you is $10 million. And the reason to um, have this uh, resolution before you is this would just be the next bond issue. So you basically put together a master plan for how you're going to fund your whole project. When you have larger projects that tend to take two to three years to finance or construct, I'm sorry, to construct, <coughs> you um, oftentimes will not issue all of the debt at one time. So that way you're not paying on debt that you haven't actually spent the money on that might not be spent for another couple of years. And so this $10 million would just get you continue moving forward if you all approve the contract at, at the next opportunity to be able to do so. Uh, the plan here is to do $10 million dollar bond issue and to do that this calendar year to be able to utilize the county's uh, allocation for bank qualification. So that is a law that goes back to 1986. It allows you to issue up to $10 million in a calendar year uh, that qualifies uh, where banks can get a, a, an extra exemption on carrying that. So it lowers the overall cost of that debt to whoever issues it. <coughs> so that is the strategy there. Go ahead and, and issue that debt. Uh, in terms of timing on that, we, we will need to get moving on the rating process. The county, uh, to this point, has incurred no costs on this $10 million bond issue. We can hold the rating uh, uh, conference call or the, with the uh, credit committee until such time as you approve it. And then as you approve the contract, then we could go ahead and have them release, move forward, and then be ready to go with them. Without that, it does take a little bit longer um, to be able to go through this process of getting the credit rate. So could you go ahead and approve this? Absolutely, you could approve this right now, and it doesn't run into any issue. Um, many times, uh, issuers will go ahead and approve the entire project in a bond resolution. The approach that we've taken here with the county is before each bond issue, we'll come back to you with the amount for that bond issue, so that way you still have control over the overall purchase. Okay. Anybody else got questions? Question. Oh, Chris. This bond issue, I think we're not, I don't, I believe the way I see it and I've read it that we will, we won't be needing this money till 2023. I'm sorry? 2023 is when, get the bond, but we won't be taking any money out of it till 2023. The paperwork I've got. I think on that, the construction of it would be breaking ground pretty quickly here is my understanding on the construction schedule. And so I think that the money would be being spent pretty quickly. And actually, <coughs> and I think based upon what I had looked at, run out within. I've, I've got figures where it says that 2023, we had a schedule of the money we was going to be spending. So much here, so much there, so much there. And the license was 2023. If I'm understanding, or if I'm understanding what you're referring to, I'm thinking that might be the schedule for bond issues okay. that are coming. So this would be the the next bond issue right here. Then there would be another one, maybe mid summer in 2022, and then the final one coming in early 2023. So that would be the last bond issue. My thoughts: this would be the last one we've got on this jail. Uh, so what, what I presented on the 21st was, was the fund issue, not the spin-down schedule for the construction. The spin-down schedule for the construction, but, well, the bond issue schedule that I showed you is based on the spin-down schedules that um, have been submitted. And then we showed them to Cumberland Securities, and then they came up with the plan. What was the spend down schedule? Was, was there a 20 be used in 2023? 10, in, 10, be, 10 million? It'll be used in 2022. It'll be used next, next spring and summer. Okay. I guess what I've got's wrong, yeah. Any other questions? What we've all got. 
All right, what's the will of the body? I make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the Brian resolution. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any discussion on approving the bond resolution? Without suspending the rules, it's a contract. All right, Mrs. Noe wants the rules suspended. No, I don't. She's not part of this well, body. I'm just telling you what you have to do if you want to go on. Well, I can tell you, uh, unless the rules are suspended, you'll be sued. Okay? Mr. Chairman. In, in light of the other one going back to committee, makes no harm to let this one. Mr. Bessler has explained it. I see no harm in waiting on the, that one as well. All right. Would you like to make a motion that we make a motion this that we rescind this and put it back to committee and satisfy all minds? Is there a second? I'll second. In second. Any discussion as, as to referring the bond resolution back to the committee? Hearing none, then all those in favor, let it be done by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, so I assume it's unanimous. That pretty well concludes the business. I've got one announcement. You have before you uh, an announcement regarding the Christmas parade. If you are, if you want to participate in that Christmas parade, you need to let Chris know as soon as possible so that she can make arrangements, okay? Mr. Chairman, does that, do, are we set then that our next committee meeting concerning this will be at our next scheduled committee meetings? I assume it'll be on the agenda next committee meeting, yes. November the 9th or 8th? A week, a week from tonight. Yes, sir. All right, we stand adjourned.